My name is Seti and welcome back to another Tips and Tricks with Apps Events and Acer. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Google Classroom and everything you need to know about Google Classroom so you can get ready for that certification course. So let's dive into it. Now, Google Classroom is an amazing platform used by many teachers and students alike to not only share files, but also collaborate, communicate, and above all, make sure that they stay organized. Now, where do you access Google Classroom? Well, you can find it either at the top in those nine dots, and then you can select Google Classroom. Alternatively, you can also type in classroom.google.com. This will take you straight to the Google Classroom website. Now, these two ways of accessing Google Classroom will make it super easy for both you and your students to access Google Classroom. Now, the first time you access it, you will be asked to make sure you select your account. Now, you can see here, I'm going to select my account and then click on continue. Now, the next question I'm asked is, am I a student or a teacher? Now, obviously, if your students are logging on, you will tell them to log in using student. Now, we as teachers, we're going to be selecting I'm a teacher. And we now have a blank Google Classroom. Now, when you click on that menu, you'll see there's a calendar. Now, the reason you're seeing calendar there is because for every classroom you create within Google Classroom, it automatically generates a calendar as well. So if you're setting assignments for students, well, then these will appear onto that calendar. Now, in order for you to get started, you're going to have to find that plus icon in the top right corner. Once you've clicked on it, there are two options. You can either join a class, and this is where you'll need a special code in order for you to join a class, or you can create a classroom. So go ahead and click on create a class. You're going to be asked to give your class a name, and we'll use demo apps events. In addition to this class name, you can add a section and a bit more information about your class. Now, just for the sake of this demonstration, we're going to leave these blank and then we're going to click on create. Now, this is our main page for our classroom. And as you will see at the top, if you've used classroom before, it looks different. Now, that's because Google Classroom has been updated and we now have four tabs at the top. Now, the first is our stream. Now, the stream is where all the information appears and all the latest assignments and posts appear to your students. Now, if they leave a comment to this, you will see this appear in your stream as well. The second tab is classwork, and this is where you create assignments and quizzes or you ask your students questions. This is a very powerful tool because it not only helps you to push out files and assignments to your students, it also helps them to stay organized because it can send out reminders for when these assignments are due. The third tab is the people and this is where you can now add students. You can manually add them there or you can also add co-teachers. Now at the top you can add your co-teachers, at the bottom you're adding students. And then the fourth one is a grades tab. This is your grade book where you have a nice overview of all your students' grades. Now let's go ahead and set our very first assignment. Now we're going to go to classwork and then we're going to create a new assignment. Now, before you click on assignment, do have a look at these other options here as well. We have quiz assignments. We can ask our students a question. We can even share some materials with them. Now, these are materials you already have on your Google Drive or even materials you're going to upload in the process of generating this materials post. And then the last option is to reuse a post. So let's say that you've already created a post for your year six class. Well, you can reuse that with a year seven class and then simply tweak what needs to be tweaked. This is incredibly useful and a huge time saver for teachers. Now at the bottom it says topic and this is where you can manually add topics to really structure and organize your course. So for example, if we were to deliver a course on the Google Certified Educator Level 1, we would then structure it in topics related to the different applications we talk about. We'll have a section or a topic on Google Classroom, a topic on Google Docs, a topic on Google Slides, etc. Now go ahead and select that first option right there, Assignment. Now here you can give your assignment a title, a description, so you explain to your students what the assignment is about. Now you can add attachments here from your Google Drive or even upload them, but you can also create a brand new file right from inside the create an assignment page. So you can see here when I click on create, you have all these different types of files that show up. Now, once you're ready to push this out to your students, there are two options. You can push it out immediately and then they get notified of this new assignment or you can schedule it ahead of time. Now, when you click on that drop down arrow, you can schedule your post. 
So this means that you can carefully plan ahead and you can schedule the posts to go out about five or 10 minutes before each lesson. You can also schedule it so that your students do not get notified when they shouldn't be spending too much time online. Now, if you have multiple classes in the top right corner, you can select multiple classes and also you can select certain groups within those classes of students. This allows you as a teacher to differentiate and it also allows the students to feel as if they're working at their level. Now you can choose to grade this or not. So this is where the points come in. And then at the bottom, we have a due date and we can assign it a topic. So for example, if I had an assignment linked to this video, the topic would be Google Classroom. Now setting up the other types of posts looks very similar. Now the only one there that looks a bit different is sharing a material. So that means that there are no points. So there's no grades attached to that. And obviously there's no due date. You simply share a post. Now you can schedule this. So what you can do is you can set everything to be automatically shared with your students whenever you start discussing that topic or that subject in class. Now, two last things I want to mention, and that's again within the classwork page, you'll notice there are two extra buttons at the top. On one side, we have our Google Calendar, as mentioned before, it automatically creates a calendar link to your classroom, but there's also a class drive folder. That means that all the work generated and created within Google Classroom or shared with Google Classroom, everything ends up in that one folder, which makes it incredibly easy to access files and find them later on. Now, I hope you found this introduction to Google Classroom useful. If you did, scroll down to that comment section below. Let us know how are you using Google Classroom and what would you like to discuss in these videos about Google Classroom? If you'd like to see a more advanced breakdown of Google Classroom, let me know in that comment section below. And then if you would like to discuss all the other applications and really get prepared for that Google Certified Educator Level 1 course, well then you can let me know in the comment section as well. Now, I will leave a link to both Acer and Apps events in that comment section below. If you're interested in bringing the certified boot camps to your school or organization, check out that link to Apps events. And if you're looking for a great Chromebook for your students or a more powerful device, well then Acer is the link for you. Now, I hope you found this helpful. This was another tips and tricks with Apps events and Acer, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.